Yo, what's up Giants fans, hub watchers, YouTube and Rumble subscribers, Twitter and Instagram followers, it's Kush back at again with another New York Giants update video. Now guys, earlier this morning, I want to say around 10, 10.30ish, uh, Brian Dable, the new head coach and 20th head coach by the way, I thought it was 22nd, that's why in like, in my reaction stream, I said 22nd, my bad, but Brian Dable, the 20th head coach of the New York Giants, just had his first official introductory press conference, answered a good amount of questions from reporters. Um, and, you know, this is just me kind of giving you a little bit of my thoughts on that. But more so, I'm kind of going to give a couple of quotes that really stuck with me or, you know, questions that really were, I, I guess, not necessarily hard hitting, but they just they got to me, you know. So I was like, all right, this is something that he spoke upon that I really liked. But general first impressions of Brian Dable obviously everybody they want to see how does he compare to the former head coach joe judge and his pressers and i'll say this he's a lot more uh i don't know if down to earth is the phrase but we all know how joe judges uh, like first couple press conferences were especially his introductory press conference where the emotion is struck within people was that like it got people to want to get out there on the field and play for him and that's a good thing right and that's not to say players don't want to get out there on the field and play for Brian Dable it was just a little bit more calm I guess um he was kind of to the point very similar to Joe Shane the general manager which I I wasn't expecting but I guess makes sense they're but they're both from Buffalo maybe that's just how they do things in Buffalo a little bit more low-key um you know a little bit more down to earth a little bit more calm uh, and just straight to the point and the more and more I think about it, Dable and Shane, the way they answered questions were very much the same. Um, now, Dable, he did have a bit of humor in his press conference as well. You know, he came up here, he made a joke about how I'm limiting you guys to one question. And then the very first report, I asked him a question. It says, I'm breaking your rule. I'm going to ask you two-parter. And then, you know, uh, Dable responded with like, already, man, you can't even wait past the first day. So he threw a little bit of humor in there as well. It was definitely, I guess, a change of pace from joe judge and once again that's not to put down the way joe judges press conferences because let's not all act as we as if we didn't like it at first but the two most important things to take away from it in my opinion were what he had to say about daniel jones and what he had to say about patrick graham let's talk about the patrick graham one first because someone asked him whether or not he was going to keep graham i believe like just straight up he the person said that there were reports coming out that we were going to keep Patrick Graham as the defensive coordinator unless he goes and takes a head coaching job where, you know, he gets hired as a head coach. And Dable straight up confirmed that. I wasn't expecting a confirmation this early. I thought he was going to go along the lines and say something like, oh, we're going to, you know, do a little bit of a coaching search on that side of the ball, you know, do our due diligence and see what's, what's up with it. But no, this is his exact quote. He said, the players respect him. That is accurate. And unless he doesn't get a defense, um, a head coaching job, he will remain the defensive coordinator of the uh, New York Giants. And like I said before, I don't mind Patrick Graham as the DC. Uh, I do think he has some things that he needs to improve. I do think that fans are definitely a little bit, you know, too infatuated with him as the DC. Um, once again, not sure if that's the right term, but we definitely... We definitely overrate him a little bit like there are issues the most glaring issue from this past year would be of course that we were the worst defense in the final two minutes of the first half i think we gave up a combined 90 points or something what weren't we like outscored every single game in the final two minutes of the first half we i i want to say out of the 18 weeks of football we played or 17 weeks of football we played 15 out of those 17 weeks we allowed a team to march down the field in two minutes and score it was ridiculous and then of course on top of that you know the one i've always talked about which is that the defense just takes way too long to click and get going this year it took like seven weeks which is just that's like almost half of the season that's unacceptable the year before it took like four to five so there's there's stuff he needs to improve upon but patrick graham is a great magnificent defensive mind the man has done a lot with very little talent and with a lot of injuries and he still managed to produce a top half defense in the nfl so, of course, I'm not that mad with him staying here. And then a little quick uh, note on the offensive coordinator. Dable said it's a work in progress to decide who will call the plays on offense. It will depend on the coordinator. So, you have it right there straight off the bat. I thought he was going to call plays. He was going to come in here and take that play calling duty. It's what most offensive minded head coaches do. Um, not a lot of them, you know, just sort of give it to their offensive coordinator. And as a first time head coach, I thought he would have wanted to take that because the offensive coordinator they're going to hire is most likely going to be a first-time offensive coordinator as well. 
it's just this is just me i think it would probably be smarter if he did take the play calling duties at least for the first year or so while that offensive coordinator just sort of gets the hang of their job before you hand off the reins um especially if it's going to be a guy like ken dorsey as well i feel like it'd be easier and maybe he'd be quicker on the uptake to you know see what it is to call these plays on whatever brian dable scheme is going to be which he also talked about a little bit as well he said the scheme and the philosophy is going to depend on the players so he'll have to meet with them he'll have to you know basically talk to them just get to know them see what they like and this leads directly into daniel jones because dable said that he drove he drove through the snowstorm now there's there was kind of a little bit of a nor'easter up here in the nyc uh in new jersey area uh, Dable, he drove through that storm to get to the building <laughs> and Daniel Jones was one of the very few people that was in the building ready to meet him. Daniel Jones was also among one of the first players to, you know, get in contact with him as soon as he was hired. And Dable said they've been in contact. They talked a little bit and he told Jones to get to him, you know, forward him or text him or whatever line of communication they have. Things that he liked from previous offenses, whether it's from Duke or whether it's from his three years in the NFL. Now, there's something really good because we all know the playbook the past two years in terms of offense hasn't really been that good like crossing routes seem to disappear and in daniel's rookie year crossing routes seemed to be one of his favorite routes to throw and he'd always nail them we'd always get good yardage on them um you know we all make the jokes about how garrett loves his curls he loves his comeback routes he loves his short you know stop routes or you know short turnaround point routes definitely you know i definitely think it's a good idea that he's getting that in there and once again it goes back to him saying that he has to work with the players to see what the philosophy of this offense is going to be. And of course, this all just goes back and relates to all the rumors saying that as, like, as soon as he was hired, that Dable is a Jones guy. We heard the same thing about Joe Shane as well. Uh, and Joe Shane even said that, yeah, he's a believer in Jones for now. So we're, it looks like we're definitely going to move forward him for this season in his fourth year, which I'm not against. I've said it before. I believe the smartest thing to do is to keep Daniel for the fourth year. However, do not pick up his fifth year option. And that's just me. Do not pick up his fifth year option. Get that offensive line around him. And I do think that you can get a good offensive line around him in one year if you spend heavy draft capital on two positions in center and right tackle. And in the free agency, you get some good depth. If you have that around him, that alone should be a massive upgrade and would be the best situation right there that he's been in. And let's see what he does in his fourth year with protection. And, you know, with protection, usually everything falls into place. Usually the weapons are a bit healthier. You know, you just see it happen. Usually, you know, the quarterback almost always improves with better protection. If he does and he blows us out of the water, then, you know, extend the man. He's the franchise quarterback. If he does not, move on. That's what I think should happen. I'm not sure if that's what they're going to do. The way Dable and Shane has been talking about Daniel Jones, it's as if, you know, they're, they're convinced he's the franchise QB, which I'm not sure if that's too smart. You, you, I think you definitely need to see better results before you make that. But we'll see. And then um, in terms of Saquon, Barkley was another player he spoke on as well. He just kind of spoke on Saquon's, I guess, character qualities and said that he hasn't heard anything bad about him, that he's excited to work with him. I, and I'll say this. There is definitely a sharp contrast in the way that Joe Shane has spoken about uh, Daniel Jones and spoken about Saquon, or I should say has not spoken on Saquon, because to this point, I don't think I've heard a quote about him um, from Shane. And then with Dable, there's definitely a contrast as well. Maybe I'm reading too much into it, but that kind of suggests that are they looking to kind of get Saquon up and out of here this offseason or perhaps during the season, during the trade deadline? It's, it's definitely something to keep in mind. Because they're talking about Daniel Jones once again as if they're already convinced he's the franchise QB. And anything they say about uh, Saquon has just been limited to, oh, he's a good guy. He's a good player. You know, not not really getting too much into it. We'll see, man. We'll see. Because these two players are definitely um two players that they need to make a quick decision on. And I feel like they have made that decision on DJ. Uh, we'll see what it is on Saquon. But all in all, I think it was a pretty good press conference, uh, opening press conference from Brian Dable. I like what I heard for the most part. Of course, it is up on the Giants official YouTube channel. It is up on Giants.com as well for the rest of the quotes that you guys want to see for the rest of the questions. I just thought these were the most important and these were the most relevant as of right now. Um, You know, he said a couple, you know, just kind of coach speak things. And when I say coach speak, I mean, you're going to get this from every coach where he's like, we're not going to um going to try and predict anything. We're going to work day by day. 
got to learn how to crawl before you walk and, you know, learn how to walk before you run and things like that. Like every coach is going to give you those quotes. Uh, but if you want to go and see more of it, definitely go check it out. Uh, that's it for now, guys. Let me know what you think. Put your thoughts down below and I'm out. Hey, guys. Thanks for watching. Thank you for checking out my channel, The Hub, here on Giants YouTube. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you hear every time I put out a video. Like it, share, and subscribe. And I'm out.